So now we're going to go back to the outside of the computer and we're going to look at, we're going to talk a little bit about the main peripherals which would be such things as the monitor, the keyboard and, and the mouse. And when selecting a monitor you have to take into consideration its compatibility with your system, the resolution of the monitor depending on how much resolution you need. There's also um, a flicker rate which is um, we also have dots per inch the refresh rate which is a vertical refresh rate depending on the hertz that it's, uh, it's at. We've got 60 hertz and 72 hertz and we've got to take into consideration the actual viewable size. So when selecting a monitor there are certain considerations to make note of. Now, originally monitors um, they've got to be compatible with your video card and we've got a few standards for the video cards. We have the original which was the CGA then it moved to EGA, VGA which might be a little bit more familiar to you now and now pretty much all the monitors are SVGA monitors and which they support is 16 million colors and 1600 by 1200 screen resolution. So there's just some information to keep in mind when selecting a monitor. Uh, keyboards are pretty much standard and mice are standard. Mice are also depending on the connector that you're looking for. The newer mice have USB connections and the older ones have serial connections which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail now. We've got your regular PS2 mouse connection and as I said earlier sometimes mice now they're coming with USB connections or if you've got an older mouse you're gonna have just a regular serial port connection and the same as the keyboard the mouse connection looks very similar to the keyboard connection which is also a PST2 keyboard connection that we have here comes standard if you've got an older keyboard you might be using the serial port in order to connect the keyboard. We can see here all the different connections in the rear of your computer system. We've got uh, our typical USB connections. We've got our COM1 serial port which here is a 9-pin male. And we've got a parallel port which here is a 25-pin female. And the difference between a male and a female is a male has pin connectors and a female has co hole connectors. We've got here a game port which is a 16 pin female. We've got our speaker, our inline and our mic connections. We've got here a typical BNC connection, uh, RJ45 connection which is used mainly on network cards and we've got our RJ11 connection which is your typical phone line connection. So if you had your modem in the back here you'd be able to see this connection. If you had a network card installed on your computer system you'd see the RJ45 connection and depending on your computer system sometimes they come with the BNC connections. Now the main difference between a parallel port and a serial port is that a serial port is has a 1-bit connection whereas a parallel port has 8-bit at one time it's able to send and parallel ports are mainly used for printers and that what the downfall of a parallel port is it's able to send more information but it's also limited to the distance it's able to send it so if your connection is further a serial port is better I think parallel port has a 15 foot limit to how far it's able to send its information. So the parallel port it has a bi-directional 8-bit operation and we've got some standards that the parallel ports have to go under which is the IEEE 1284 standard and the three different kinds of parallel ports that fall under the standard are the SPP which is a standard parallel port and this allows only single direction travel of data from your computer to a device. We've got the enhanced parallel port which allows bi-directional data transfer but only allows one at a time. 
So printers use this to communicate with the computer to tell it such things as paper, ink levels, and to warn of uh, paper gems and printer side errors. And then the last one we've got the ECP which is the enhanced capabilities port and this allows bi-directional traffic which um, can transfer information in both directions simultaneously. But it requires a special ECP cable in order to complete this process. When we talk about our serial connections we also have a standard which is the RS-232C standard and we can see it here that in this standard we've actually got two different um, short forms here that uh, ways for the information to travel one is the DTE which is the data communications equipment and the other one is DCE which is data terminal equipment uh, DTE would include equipment such as your computer where the information travels out of and the other one the DCE where the information travels to um, it always has to be in a serial communication in order for it to work that one device must be designated the DTE and the other device must be de designated the DCE and this is in order so that the pins align and the information can travel between the two and this is why when you're connecting two computers together if you only have a DTE data communication equipment um, you're not able to, you have basically a null connection because because you need to have a null modem adapter which cross connects the pins so that the signals can pass from DTE to DTE the next connector we're going to talk about are USB ports and what they're able to do they're able to connect up to 127 devices in a daisy chain so you can have one host which would be your PC and you can have up to from 1 to 127 devices connected through a USB port and USB ports support hot pluggable devices which means that your computer does not need to be turned off and on in order to install the device you can simply plug it into the USB port and if it's hot pluggable then it's just simply and recognizes that it's there. There is no need for external power for a USB. The USB takes the power from the system itself. The data rate is 12 megabytes per second with a shielded cable and 1.5 megabytes for an unshielded cable. And the maximum cable length of USB connections is 5 meters. Another kind of connector that we're going to be talking about is for SCSI devices. We can he see here that there's some sample of some SCSI connectors. And SCSI is short for Small Computer Shielded or Standard Inter Interface. And you'll see the short form used a lot when referring to these devices. Now what a SCSI is, it's advantageous over other ports because it's got a high rate of data data transfer and its ability is to support up to seven devices that's eight devices including the controller card and what kind of devices it supports are hard drives, tape drives, optical drives, scanners, CD-ROM drives they can all use a SCSI interface SCSI, use, SCSI, SCSI uses an ID to specify the device which are numbered from 0 to 7 and most SCSI adapters have to be set to SCSI ID 7. We've got four examples here of the different kinds of SCSI connectors that are available on the market. The first one is probably the most common. It's also known as a Centronix 50 pin or SCSI slow and it's got a capacity of 5 megabytes per second for data transfer. The next one is an 8-bit SCSI fast and it's got a capacity of 10 megabytes per second and it's got a 50-pin high-density connector. The next one is the SCSI fast wide 16-bit 
or SCSI uh, 3, and it's a 68-pin high-density connector. And then we've got the newer model of SCSI, which is the, NC, the SCA, which is an 80-pin, as an 80-pin density. Now SCSI can also be um, internal or it can be external depending on the device that you've chosen to install. To the right of the SCSI connectors we have the VGA connectors. Just a simple sample of a male and a female VGA connector. So you would be using this uh, generally for a monitor. You just simply plug it into the back of your computer, tighten the screws and that would be the connection. This would be plugging into usually a video card or some kind of adapter like that. I'm going to do a quick note on Token Ring. It's very similar to the Ethernet, although it's using a different kind of technology, but it's going to look similar to the Ethernet port here. And depending on the card, sometimes that they have another kind of connection, a BNC connection, but it all depends on which kind of Token Ring card that you are using. Then we've just got your regular speaker, your inline and your mic jacks that you would connect your speakers, your microphone and your inline also to. And when we're talking about serial ports, we see here that this serial port is COM1. If you had a second serial port, it would be COM2. The third would be COM3. The fourth would be COM4. When it comes to parallel ports, the first uh, parallel port is LPT1 port, and the second one would be an LPT2 port. So when referring to the different ports, when we're going to look at the IRQs later on, we're going to be referring to the different COM ports and the LPT ports.